thanks for watching video seven in the Rust of Robot series. Last video we did some UI. In this video we're going to continue that. First we'll start by creating a new scene, file new scene, file save scene. Save it as start menu. The first thing in this new scene is going to be a title for our game. So UI text. Let's set up the canvas just like we did in the other scene. Scale with screen size, 1280 by 800. And for text, let's rename this to GUI title label. Make sure it's centered here. Position it at zero in the X and 200 in the Y. And for size, we'll go 500 width, 100 height. Now change the text to our title, which is Rusted Robot. Set this to bold. Increase the size of the font to 72. Center and middle. And let's change the color to white. To create a new UI element, right click the canvas UI button. Rename this to GUI play button, set the position to 0, 050, set the width to 300, the height to 50, change the color to yellowish, doesn't really matter, we're going to change out all the art later, go into the drop down here, change the text to play, bold, 32, should be middle here, and color's fine. Let's make a couple more of these buttons by duplicating this one. Right click, duplicate, rename it, GUI leaderboards, button, Open up the drop down, click the text object in the text field, change it to leaderboards. And let's make another one, duplicate here. Rename. GUI options button. Again, change the text. This one will be options. Now let's reposition both of these. The middle one will be 0 in the Y. The last one will be negative 50. Now you have your three buttons. Right click on the canvas again, UI, text. Rename this, GUI high score label. Reposition it, X will be 0 and negative 175 for the Y width 300, height 50. Change the text to high score colon. Set the font to bold, 32 for the size. Center, middle, and let's change the color to white. All right, one more UI element. Right click the one we just made, duplicate it, rename it to GUI high score. This will be the actual score. Set the position to negative 225 in the Y. Text should be any number for now. 33445 is my high score. Let's set this back to normal instead of bold. Now let's make one of these buttons actually do something. Click the play button. Add component. We're going to add a new script. Name it CS play button. It's going to be C sharp. Create and add. Double click to open up in mono. Okay, let's add a new function public void play clicked. We're going to use this function so that when the player clicks the play button, we'll call application.load level and then the name of our scene game level, and that will take us to the different scene. File save all, close. 
Make sure you're still on the play button. In the on click area over here, press the plus button. And then choose the play button object. In this drop down, look for our new script that's on this object, the CS play button. Then choose play click. Before we can play this, we have to go into our file, build settings, add the current scene, and then drag in the other scene, game level. So both our scenes will be part of the project when it builds. Now we can play it. When we click the play button, it takes us to our game level. That's what we want. We can go ahead and stop this and start the game level. Double click the scene. Let's add some UI in here, some menus. Right click on the canvas that we already have, UI button. Rename this, GUI pause button. Make sure the anchor is top left for this one. And set the X to 100 and the Y to negative 100. And the size to 100 for width and 100 for height. Color, let's go with uh, yellow again. In the text, change it to just an uh, icon for now. Let's go with an at symbol. We'll change it later. Bold, 32. Click the pause button again. Add component. Just like before, we're going to add a new script to handle the click. Let's name this CS Pause Button. Create and add. Double click to open up. So we need to add some public variables for this. So public game object game UI. This will be everything you see when the game is in play public game object pause UI and obviously again this is everything you see when the game is paused now. We need a new function public void pause clicked and inside that we're going to set these menus to false using the set active for the game UI pause will actually set it to true so dot set active true so that will hide the game UI show the pause UI save all close this now that the scripts made it's gonna update and we need to make the objects that are gonna go in those new slots so right click create empty game UI put everything that would be in the game and not the pause menu under this object. Then right click create empty again and this one will be pause UI. We haven't made any UI elements that will go in pause yet so this one will stay empty for now. Go back to the pause button. Let's drag in those two new parent objects that we created. The game UI object goes here. And the parent UI object goes here. Next, let's make some pause UI elements. So right click pause UI, UI, text. Rename this GUI paused label. Position is 0 in the X, 200 in the Y, 500 width, 100 height. Text will just say paused. It's going to be bold. 72 for the size, center, middle, and white text. Next we need a button to unpause, so right click on pause UI, UI button, rename it to GUI play button. Set the position to 050, 
Size is 300 width, 50 height. Color is yellowish. Change the text to say play. It's going to be bold, 32, and duplicate this for another button, GUI Options button. This one will be lower, so the position is 0, 0. Everything else is the same but the text. Change the text to Options. One last button, duplicate the one we just made, rename it to GUI Quit button, and we'll use this for, you guessed it, quitting out to the main menu. Set the position of this one to negative 50 in the Y. That will line up our three buttons again. And the text will be Quit. Now let's hook up these buttons to some scripts. Let's open up the pause button script that we made. We're going to use this to unpause as well. First thing we need to do though is hide the pause UI at start. So in the start function, pause UI dot set active false. Then we can create that new function to unpause. Public void unpause clicked. Game UI dot set active true pause UI dot set active false save this close it now click the pause button again go to the on click area press the plus button choose the pause button I might have to search for it then the function will be under CS pause button pause clicked now choose the play button in the pause UI plus button select the pause button again CS pause button, but this time it's unpause clicked. At this point, we got buttons set up to bring up a pause menu. We got another button to exit the pause menu. The last thing is the script for the quit. So click the quit button, add component, new script, CS quit button, double click to open up. So just like our play button and the script for that on the main menu, we're going to create a function to go to another room. Public void quit clicked. Application dot load level. And in this case, it will be the first level. Start menu. So this will take us out of the game, back to the start menu. File, save all, exit. Now let's link our on click for that button to our new script. Plus, find the quit button. In the drop down, find the script, CS quit button, quit clicked. Now let's try everything out. Play. You'll see the pause menu goes away when you start. Pause. Play. So it brings up and closes the pause menu. Quit goes back to the start menu. Play goes back to the game. Everything works. Like, comment, and subscribe for more videos.